India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live, as always, from the CNBC TV 18 Multi Rosewell Studios. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues Nigel and Mangalam. Guys, hi, good morning. Good morning. Day two. We have the band of boys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a little cooler here in Mumbai. I think yeah. this morning, you know, yeah. a little cooler than normal. I know for a Delhi boy, this isn't cool. <laughs> but uh, for Mumbai standards, we're getting into uh, the Mumbai winter. I thought the haze is also a little better this morning. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, it was bad. I mean, uh, by Bombay standards. Delhi, of course, is catastrophic. But yeah. uh, here in Mumbai, it was getting a lot, uh, very bad. But I think this morning, I stepped out. It was looking a little better. You know, better uh, weather and hopefully better times for the markets. So, some, some, some of the people were saying that, you know, uh, running on the road in Bombay is better than you doing yoga inside your house in Delhi. That's the difference <laughs> between the air quality index. No, between I mean, the two uh, cities. Delhi is uh, absolutely uh, crazy uh, what's happening. But well, you know, we see that every year uh, and every year uh, people complain for that, for, you know, for those sort of few months. And then, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunately uh, back to usual in that sense. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, authorities take charge, get a fix of things. Well, uh, that's a conversation for another uh, sort of uh, uh, time. But let's just start by telling you what you need to know as far as markets are concerned. Because it's looking a little better. I mean, uh, and this is largely on the back of what we've seen overnight. Uh, because two days in a row, the markets in the US were coming off. NASDAQ had lost about 3%. Last night, a little bit of a lift, half a percent on the NASDAQ. S&P about 0.4% higher. So risk sentiment has improved. By the way, bond markets traded better. So yields came off about two basis points to about 4.42. Dollar index has cooled off about 0.5%. And I suspect it's largely positioning related. Because, I mean, I think if you go back and look at the last fortnight or so, pretty much every day, the dollar index has moved up uh, by 0.2, between a quarter percent and about a half a percent or so. So a little bit of cooling off is what we've seen as far as the dollar index is uh, concerned. Just so, you know, post-Trump, we've got very little data in terms of how general economic confidence, etc., in the U.S. is. Uh, we got that ISM manufacturing number. This week, we'll also get the manufacturing, the PMI numbers, flash PMI numbers. But you had one indicator last night, NAHP builder confidence uh, that, beat, uh, that uh, beat expectations. It hit a seven-month high. So this is, I mean, uh, just immediately post-Trump. Uh, and and uh, we'll, of course, as I said, get more data this week. Oil prices jumped 3.5%, uh, uh, 73 plus. Gold prices came up as well, back above $2,600. Uh, and, uh, you know, there is, of course, some development in the Middle East, uh, which we uh, can talk about. But I think there is another important development uh, which may also be uh, kind of the common reason uh, why uh, both did uh, well. So the Biden administration over the weekend actually uh, authorized the use of, and these are news reports, authorized the use of long-range missiles by Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, you know, Russia has so far maintained that, that this is the red line. I mean, you know, if, uh, uh, if Ukraine is given long-range missiles capable of striking deep into Ukraine, uh, Russia will consider that it's at war with NATO. Uh, and I think uh, this is something which was, uh, you know, unsettling, a bit of a disquiet. And uh, you had uh, gold, which went up, and I think, of course, oil prices, which went up as well. As I said, there was also that Middle East news flow, uh, Israel striking, uh, you know, in, in Beirut. And, uh, of course, that's, that's a developing situation as well. But I thought this was important to highlight. Uh, lots of headlines uh, suggesting more li sort of likely Trump appointments. There are some news reports about who the likely... Uh, Treasury Secretary is going to be, but no confirmation. So we'll wait for that. Uh, how are things set up in terms of levels? I mean, if the market, after coming off, and we have come off quite a bit, has got to come up a little bit, you've got to start to look at uh, what it needs to get past. So then 23,748, 23,750 roughly becomes the first sort of uh, resistance line which the market needs to get above uh, for uh, things to improve uh, somewhat. Supports come in at about 23,189. Uh, we've been putting out the same number last couple of days. That's a 61.8% retracement of the full rally from the June 4th lows and uh, to the all-time highs. Uh, so let's see. I mean, if uh, some gains are able to sustain. Bank Nifty uh, yesterday traded within. It was an inside day for the Nifty Bank. We traded within uh, Thursday's range 
On the way up for the Nifty Bank, uh, the level to take out is 50,000. Uh, 50,828, we left off at about 5,363. It's about 1, 1.5% 1 away. On the downside, the recent low uh, is 49,904. And then, of course, for the Nifty Bank as well, you look at the 61.8% uh, retracement. So that's the setup. I mean, also remember here locally in India, tomorrow is a holiday because of the account of voting in Maharashtra. Uh, so markets are going to not be trading. Uh, well, global markets are going to be trading. So there is that element to throw in as well. Gift Nifty, I think, is indicating a slightly higher start. I mean, it's not how you start, it's how you close, especially after what we've seen over the last, uh, you know, one month, one, one and a half months or so. so. 70 points higher, but at least some green to begin the day with. Guys. Absolutely. You know, so I was lo just looking at the queues every day and the more things are different, the more they turn out to be the same. And every time after the sell-off that we see, we hope that, you know, there is some sort of recovery coming by. And if there is a short covering bounce, chances are that it may be, you know, more hope than anything else. So that's something that we'll most definitely keep an eye out on. The Nifty has declined for eight straight sessions. In the, in the last eight uh, sessions itself, it's lost about 1,000 points. So if you look at it from a point-to-point -point basis, you know, November 6th, the Nifty was 24,484. The bulls were hoping that the Nifty goes ahead and crosses that 24,500 mark. Well, eight days later, you have the Nifty at 23,454. Now the bulls are hoping that the Nifty crosses that 23,500 mark and stays above that as well. The 200-day moving average that we're talking about. The index to track today will, of course, be the IT index. Why do I say that? Because yesterday was the key drag on the frontline indices. And that's because of the big cut that we've seen in the Nasdaq over the last few trading sessions. But yesterday, the Nasdaq ended about 0.6% higher, snapped a four-day losing streak. So to that extent, do we see some relief coming in for the IT stocks or not is something we'll watch out for. The FIS selling, we've been talking about that, right? Now, that's been reducing over the last few trading sessions. Yesterday's selling was just around 1,400-odd crores. And the DII buying is outpacing that for at least the last three trading sessions. If you look at the net flows as well, for three trading sessions, they've been in positive. Yesterday, it was close to 1,000-odd crores as well. Interestingly, in index futures, uh, you know, the FIS yesterday sold the Nifty, 275 crores, not much incremental selling, but the Nifty Bank, which was outperforming, saw some purchase, so we'll keep an eye out on that one. And uh, the broad range to watch out for would be obviously yesterday's low of 23,350 and the 200-day moving average of 23,565 itself. The one stock I'll be watching out for will be Indian Hotels. In the last eight sessions, when the Nifty was down 1,000 points, this stock is up 10%. It's got the capital markets day to day and usually the company lists out its long term vision in the capital markets day. So we'll keep an eye out on that. And from a short term as well, it's entering seasonally strong quarter. So we'll watch out for that one stock. Nigel. Well, that's right. You know, the hope is that the Nifty uh, IT stocks, they do well in today's trading session because yesterday they got slam dunk and the Nifty Bank actually has been doing well. But if you had to pick a day, maybe maybe today could be the day, you know, and the bulls could look to fight back today. The reason I say that is because, you know, overnight we have the dollar index. After a while, it was down close to around half a percent, and that's something that you're waiting for. So uh, a weaker a dollar is something that you look forward to. And in terms of FII selling, they continue to sell. But the selling that we saw yesterday was half of the average that we've seen in November so far. So normally they're selling more than 3,000 crores. Yesterday it was sub-1,500 crores. So both those two data points... The bulls will want to, you know, cling on to those data points. What are the FIs doing yesterday's trading session? Well, they added more longs and shorts. So that's surprising. After a while, we've seen that close to around 5,000 long contracts is what they added, though they continue to remain net short with 76% of their positions on the short side. Moving to the options data then. Two strikes were very active. 23,500 call. You know, this is being getting written for the last few trading sessions. Even yesterday, more than 30 lakh shares getting added there. And on the downside, this 23,200 mark is very, very important. And we are seeing signs of some put writing out there. So we'll keep an eye out on that front. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, for the trend to turn, you'll want to see higher highs and higher lows as well, which hasn't been ha happening in the last few sessions. So the day's highs, in fact, uh, you know, if you just look at it, it's been on a declining trend. Every day we're making lower highs. Even if you look at the lows, on a day-to-day -day basis, you're making lower lows as well. So today you'll want to see actually the Nifty get past that 23,600 odd mark, which was yesterday's high. So that's going to be the important mark that we're looking at. So in terms of levels that we're looking at, you have the 200 DMA. That's the first reference point. Resistance at around 23,650. If you can get past this mark, then you're calling for another couple of hundred points on the upside. So this is the crucial, crucial resistance zone. While on the downside, going by the options data as well, you're looking at this 23,200 odd mark. The Nifty Bank, last two sessions, it's been showing that it wants to put in a bit of a fight. And the bulls, you know, they'll be counting on the Nifty Bank. Even in yesterday's trading session, you managed to defend the lower level, which is the 200 DMA. 
and it's closer to the 200 DMA in comparison to the 20 DMA. But you want to see the Nifty Bank do well from year on. And the sense is that if we have to bounce, well, this one needs to bounce and needs to see some kind of support coming in from the tech index as well. The Nifty Financial Services Index, one of the last few weekly expiries. So that'll be another index to track because today's Tuesday. So, you know, you'll have one of the final weekly expiries after this. It gets back to the monthly settlement. All right, Nigel, thanks a lot for that setup. We'll keep an eye on the Nifty Financial Services, the last expiry today. But uh, on that note, let's get you some equity calls today. Lawrence Blanco of CLSA says that in the short term, the Nifty is correcting off the October highs and continues to unfold towards that 22,800 to 22,990 downside target. Below this target level, he adds that the next chart support comes in at 21,281 to 21,555 area. He says he would look for evidence from the price structure and momentum indicators for a re-entry point around either of these price levels. He says, should the indicators fail to provide evidence of a tradable low at either of these levels, the risks will remain to the downside. Okay, well, we have uh, Mahesh uh, Nandurkar uh, of Jeffries commenting as well. He says, an unlikely consumer sector earnings decline, broad-based earnings downgrade, were the most disappointing aspects of the September 2024 quarter results as Q2 this is due to weaker revenue growth and margins. He says 12% earnings growth for Jeffrey's coverage, this is excluding oil and gas and metals, was still respectable though. Nifty EPS growth for FI25 is now projected uh, by them at below 10%. Mahesh adds potential government spending pickup, easy liquidity should help grow sequentially. He goes on to add banking sector remains there, high conviction bet and a buy.